So now the the business is starting to snowball. You get attached to Dave and he brings you in in the workshop. And you, you spoke about this, and I, I wanted to talk about it, is the, the troubled youth you started working with and the Ram Raiders mm -hmm. and, and these kids. And I think you and Dave both have this, this authenticity which breaks through to people which otherwise perhaps couldn't, messages couldn't get through to. I haven't said that very well. But when these kids came out with you and spent time in Piha, talk to me about how you broke through those bonds and, and, and what you've learned from, from those experiences. Okay, yeah. Well, there's a little bit of a lead up to that. Um, after I had that first group, they went back, raved about it, and then I get a phone call again the next week from the principal, Hare Rua, who's been one of my biggest supporters, saying, the kids are raving, we want to send all the teachers out. So next thing, I've gone from nothing to in the matter of a week, I've had one group and 30 teachers. And then after that, things just started flowing. Dave started inviting me back to the workshops, started doing them started getting, doing work with LifeWise, started doing work with Mate Huruhuru, started doing more work with um, Hoani Waititi. And things just started growing and escalating. And I got to a point, and you know, when you were asking me that question about fear, you know, so there were times where I was like, fuck, have I done the right thing? You know, and uh, I got to a point where there was a little bit of a downtime. And I was wondering, what am I, you know, where are we gonna head to next? And then I get a phone call. And these things just kept coming to me. I had a phone call from a really, really good close friend of mine, um, Grant Malins, who works for the education department and, and helps a lot of at-risk at, at youth. He said, look, we've got this group of boys. They're high offenders. We don't know what to do with them. They've been, all been expelled. They're like 13, 14 years old. I love what you're doing. Do you think you can help them? And for me, you know, I'm into high power stuff. And that's the higher power saying, you want to help? Here He's you go. Man. Here's a group of kids. Let's go. What have you got? And I just said, yes, I can help them. I didn't know how. You know, I had, had my program. I had what I, but I'd never dealt with kids like this. And so we came to an agreement. We worked it all out. And then, you know, I had them out there for the first day. And the first day when the, the rangatahi come to me, it's just all about trust. They've got to trust me. You know, they feel comfortable with me before I push anything on them. So the first thing we do is we feed them. You know, we get them, get them comfortable. Then we, we, we went up to a lookout. We have a karakia and a little mihi whakatau and they, we introduce each other. I tell them what it's all about and I put some responsibility on them. And they're all just sitting there just looking at me going, what the, you know, what's this guy all about, you know? And they're, they're standoffish and they're in fight or flight. That 24-7, that's how they operate. And I could tell that they, they were thinking they were getting edgy, but very polite. Um, I could sense this. And so I thought, I need to get them in the water really fast. So we went down to the blue pools and we went for a swim. And they didn't want to go for a swim and like, oh, the sand and all this sort of thing. And then I told them about um, some of the, the, the stuff that I get from Dave's workshop. You know, I share that with them about bringing things in. And, you know, it's not about everything being easy. You know, we can, we can do some hard things. They're going to help us grow. Anyway, we go down for a swim. I can't get them out of the water, and they love it. So I just leave them in there, and we just swim all afternoon, lie in the sand, start talking to them about manakitanga, care for one another, T start talking to them about every time we come here, we want to look after each other and have a good time. That's what the objective of these days are. We don't want to come out here and have a bad time. I said to them, this, this workshop, or this... This day is not just, you know, it is about you, but it could be about the little kid that's over in Tamaki Makoto that's struggling, that needs to come out here. So the better that you do with this program, you know, we can get those kids that might need it. It's not just about you and try and put some responsibility onto them. I was really lucky that the, the main boy uh, who, who was like the alpha, he loved it. I think he liked the positive role model. And he loved the swimming. He loved being in nature. They loved the karakia. They loved that stuff. You know, care for one another. Working towards, uh, um, tahitanga, working towards a goal together and coming in as a community. And yeah, we were, we were just having fun. We'd, we'd slide down the sand dunes and we'd go for walks into the Nahiri up to waterfalls and go for swims. We did jujitsu. We did breath work. 
And over, over three weeks, we started forming this bond and it was started getting really strong and they wanted to come. I'd take them for hikes and we'd be hiking down Cuddy Cuddy and it would be hot and I've got all their clothes on and we're like trudging through the sand and they're like sweating. They're out, they're, it's out of their comfort zone. And, um, you know, I say, you know, when things are hard, you, you, you change the language, you know, this is a big part of it. What are you saying to yourself? And when we were walking down there, one of them goes to me, hey, mister. And I was like, what's up? And he goes, it's not even hot down here, eh? And I go, no, nah, it's not even hot. It's not even hot, eh, boy? He goes, nah, it's not even hot, eh? And then another one goes, hey, mister. I was like, yo, what's happening? He goes, oh, it's not that far. It's not that far, eh? Like, he goes, it's not as far as walking to Wellington. <laughs> you know, and so we just actually had a lot of fun. But within, in between that fun, like I'd teach them about the rips. And I'd teach them that, you know, there's a lot of dangers and there's a lot of risks out here. And whenever you get into that situation, you just want to learn as much as you can to make yourself safe and show them where we can swim and what we can do. And I, I guess uh, I took them surfing. They loved surfing. Uh, getting into the water because when you're out in the ocean man you got to pay attention and when you're out there you can't think about all the problems you're you're in the moment you know it sounds a bit cliche but that is the truth when you're out in the surf it, uh, it's an amazing um, gift and and they feel it and uh, we had some crazy success so we we did this first three week round two days a week and they wanted to do another one and then we did another one and then we ended up doing four in a row the fending dropped considerably you know some of it didn't but but they had um they had really good evidence that it had dropped one boy went on to get a job and he had a family group conference and he said coming out to te Kaiata, he was a played a big role in um him inspiring him to change the direction of his life so we know it's working uh, i love it and i just come from a place of uh, love understanding and compassion and it's working for me I'm not, I don't, I don't run it like a boot camp or anything like that. I show them real compassion. I show them I care about them. Uh, I've got their back, you know, and, you know, that's that leadership stuff and, and I follow that through. And they confide in you things they wouldn't tell other people, right? I remember you talking about the Ram Raiders, their sort of code of ethics they, they have. Yeah, well, look, uh, you know, they, do, they did start opening up to me and we'd have these conversations. We'd be lying in the grass somewhere and we'd be, you know, just having a chat and then I'd say like, where do you get the cars? And they'll be like, oh, we get them anywhere. Like this, and then he looks at me and goes, but, but we wouldn't just steal any car. Oh, really? And he goes, no, I wouldn't steal a car with a, with a baby seat in it. And I was like, maybe I should get a baby seat. <laughs> 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 yeah, life hack. Yeah. And he goes, he looks at, he goes, no, we've seen your car. We wouldn't steal that one. <laughs> and, and, you know, like, so, you know, the, and it's hard on them. Like, I know, because everywhere they look, it's bad. School's bad. At home's bad. The society come down on them. There's, there's, there's nowhere for them to go. And the only people that are op opening their arms for them is the street culture. That's where they're getting accepted. So... I don't know. And so, like, my good friend, um, Dean Brady at Level Up Mentoring, he, he puts it perfectly. You know, we've got antisocial behaviour and we're punishing them with antisocial behaviour, you know, and expecting some, some, some different results. And you know, I have to tread carefully because, you know, there's people out there doing some amazing work. And, you know, I get, these, I get the rangatahi occasionally and that. And I don't know how you get them into a classroom and do that stuff, I've got to tie out. It's an adventure. The stuff I'm teaching out there under a waterfall, they're listening, they're feeling it. We did a questionnaire, What's the, what, what, a, what is it about this program that you love the most? The breathing. Mm. They love the breathing, the breath work, it's crazy. Because they, they kind of make fun of it when I, when I tell them. And then they're lying back there and they're just, like, yeah. <laughs> they're just so relaxed and it's all stopped and, they, and they, some of them fall asleep and that's okay too. They, they just come back and they say things like, I've never ever, I've never felt like that. I've never felt that calmness. Your cup seems so full. You remind me a lot of Daniel Kiriopa, who's mm. um, been through a, a similar journey. Go back and listen to that episode. Oh, I, I did. Um, I love it. I love him. 
and you're at a point where you're just all about giving back and mm. you just uh, the passion comes through you like it's so important to help people it's mm. all it's about helping where are you i mean it's two years ish since you've started are you already far beyond what you thought was possible when you started uh, you've been keeping changing these goals like what are the goals now well i do have a big vision a 10-year vision a massive one and it's it's way out there i've ticked a lot of boxes with the goals that I've set. And I've set them and I've accomplished them fairly, fairly quickly. Uh, I'm, I, uh, yeah, I'm blown away that not only is everything working out for me, but just the absolute joy I'm getting out of life and living this life and how I've changed my life just by the internal stuff. And I never really understood what the internal stuff, what that meant. But what I think it means is like everything I did, I didn't need anything external. So like I looked at holistic health, it was the nutrition, it was the, it was the sleep, it was the breathing, you know, it was the thoughts, they're massive, the thoughts create everything. And then it was getting out and moving and reconnecting with nature and reconnecting with everyone around me. Um, so I'm getting so fulfilled from doing that. It's exciting times. I've got some really cool people coming into my world and it's like an attra- you hear about this attraction thing and it's happening. And I've got a lot of really cool people. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned Jeanette Searle, but she is helping me. And if anyone recognises that name, they'll know that you know, she's, a, she's an amazing person and uh, she's, been, she's been guiding me and mentoring me. And... The things that we've got planned for the next 12 months are huge. The things that we've got planned with Woody are huge. And I, I just, um, I'm just, yeah, I just want to try and spread the love. And, you know, I'm not an expert on any of this stuff. I'm just me. I'm just this average guy who's changed his life around. And I haven't needed anything to do it apart from just doing the eternal work, meditation, goal setting, visions.